All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my second webinar for parents, Parenting Through the Coronavirus Pandemic. I'm going to be coming here live to you guys at 12 p.m. Eastern every day, at least through the end of April, and we'll see how long we all collectively need the support. This is how I feel that I can best support parents who are going through this challenging time in our world and in our lives. And so I have a few lovely mamas joining me, Laura from Vancouver, Carrie from Wisconsin, and we're talking about how we're getting through our days. Laura says it's a gorgeous day in Vancouver, border restrictions, stores closed or closing, very quiet. Grateful for online social distancing bringing us together. Oh, yes, I couldn't agree more. I think that this has definitely ramped up the use of online connectivity. I know that I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of uh, Zoom calls and video calls and things like that for probably five years now, but even I am ramping it up. and finding a way to stay connected to people during this difficult time. My kids are FaceTiming their friends. Oh, let me share with you all. I haven't looked this up, but I heard about this. So sadly, I should have looked it up before I told you, but you guys can look it up yourselves. For those of you who have older kids or you know older kids, and by older, I mean, you know, like older than toddlers or something. Um, there is an app, and I think it's called Netflix Party, and it's an app where you can be in different locations, and you can join and simultaneously watch something on Netflix with your friends and family through this app, and I thought that was a fabulous way for our older kids to stay in touch with their friends. If they're binge watching shows simultaneously, well, let's say if they're both, if a few of them are binge watching a show, wouldn't it be fun if they could binge watch together as if they were sitting in the same room? So Netflix party, check it out, people. It's going to be, I think it's going to be the next hottest app. So uh, I know that each day this whole crazy world changes and shifts and adjusts and we wake up to a new altered reality every day. And so I just want to make sure I'm checking in with all of you guys each day and making sure that you're getting through your days and managing your stress and trying not to feel or trying to look for the positives in this trying to get through with as little, I don't want to say disruption as possible because that's obviously not the case. We're all going to be disrupted, but just trying to get through as unscathed as possible. Let's, let's say that. My daughter was interviewed by our local newspaper yesterday, who was uh, the newspapers running a story on how to how families are adjusting to this sudden homeschooling online learning thing. And so we talked to the reporter yesterday and the photographer took a few pictures today. And uh, I have been very strict about not letting uh, people come into our house who don't live here. And so as soon as the photographer came in, I asked her to go right in the bathroom and wash her hands. And she was here maybe 15 minutes or so, but I found myself growing increasingly uncomfortable thinking about, oh my gosh, this person who doesn't live here is in our house and it's uh, a little bit scary. And I don't know who she's been in contact with. I don't know where she's been. I don't know who she's been exposed to. And so I felt myself really feeling uncomfortable and I, I actually couldn't wait for her to leave. She was a lovely woman, but I really couldn't wait for her to just finish with her pictures and get the heck out of here. Um, it was uh, 
it's, it's a different time we live in. I never would have felt that way about inviting a new person into my home before, but it's certainly the world we live in now. And so let me uh, share this link that Laura put up. Here's the link to the Netflix party. I don't know if her comment comes to all of you. So check out that link to the Netflix party in case you or your kids want to simultaneously watch something on Netflix with your friends and loved ones. So we're all adjusting to this new normal. And each day we're waking up with more closures around the world and more restrictions and more cases, sadly, more sick people, more deaths. This is like something we've only read about before in, in history books. So it's a very strange time we're living in. Oh, and Laura says, we always ask everyone to wash their hands when they come in long before coronavirus. It's just what we do so people know that. All good. Yes, that's a great, great policy and something that I think I may be enacting after this. Well, I say after this as if it's going to go away, but who knows? I guess only time will tell if it goes away or if it becomes seasonal like the flu or who knows what. There are so many unknowns with this. But let's talk for a moment about the blessings. Last night, we had dinner. And a lot of times when we have dinner, especially having teenagers who just ate a half an hour ago and they're not hungry, who's running out the door because their schedule takes them, a lot of times we're eating in shifts or, you know, just grabbing food on the run. And that's just what our previous life prior to coronavirus uh, called for us to do or the life that we created. But now no one really has anywhere to go. So we're home. And when it was dinner time, I called everyone to dinner and we all sat together. And actually my brother-in-law and my niece live with us too. And so all seven of us sat at the dinner table and it was lovely. We sat around, we had conversation, we talked about things, some about the coronavirus if it came up, some about just other things. It was very lovely. The teenagers weren't rushing to get away from the table to go back to their video games or what their homework or whatever they were doing. I just, I've been feeling more and more as the days go on that, that the people who sit at our table, which is just our family, but the people who sit at our table at dinner time are not rushing like they used to. They're lingering for a few minutes, even the teenagers, even the 17 year old who normally would eat. He's always been a fast eater. And even when he was eight or nine years old, we had to be very careful about the timing of when we called him to dinner. Because if we called him to dinner and he started, often he would be hungry. So he would start eating and he would literally be finished. Even when he was eight or nine, he would be finished before the rest of us even sat down at the table. And then we would ask him to sit there and then he would be scoochy and, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I'm bored. There's nothing to do. So uh, even he is not rushing away from the table. So there are many, many gifts to be had during this really challenging time. My husband is a financial advisor and an artist, and he's been watching the markets each day you know, kind of imploding and going up in flames. And it's certainly been a stressful time for him and his work. And I think about the trail of destruction that will be left after this with small businesses having to go out of business, corporations being affected, individuals losing jobs, the, the, the trail of destruction that, that will be left in the wake of this is almost too large for me to even wrap my head around. And so uh, 
which I just find myself searching for the needle in the haystack, looking for the good that can come out of it. I also kind of feel like this is a huge reset for our world and for our species. I've seen reports of the um, the environment being positively impacted. Beijing having clear skies for the first time in who knows how long. The smog is gone for now. Uh, I read that the waters in Venice are clearing up because the sediment is not being churned up constantly by boats. So you can actually see fish swimming in the water and ducks and dolphins are returning to the waters. And it's just magnificent. The earth is taking a big <sighs> sigh of relief and it's beautiful. And so I, I really hope that on every level from our individual decisions to our family decisions, to our career decisions, to our work decisions, to our company and business decisions, to our government decisions on every level of society from the, the tiniest to the biggest. I hope that we really use this opportunity to tweak things, not just in the US, but all over the world, tweak them and make the world a better, more friendly, more hospitable place to live. People being kinder to each other and the environment. I heard a, I saw a post yesterday by someone I know who said, uh, the question was, what did you do for your employees during the coronavirus pandemic? And the person said, this should be the question that is asked at every job interview forever. And I thought, wow, that's actually really smart. That's a really good question. Because if your business, if your company is taking care of you now, they're a good company to work for. Or, you know, if they can't, but they're doing everything they can to try to take care of you, that's a good company to work for. And Laura says, pollution decreasing. I hope we can continue this mindfulness and kindness beyond virus. Absolutely. So I'm going to be encouraging you guys each and every day to see how you can take the lessons out of this moment in time and apply them forward. I know a lot of people who will tune into to this webinar already do that. So I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir because I know the kind of people that I'm connected to and they're, uh, many of them are forward thinking and they're generous and they're kind to others and kind to the environment and all of that already. But anything we can do to just step it up a little bit is going to be helpful. Anything we can do to inspire others, other companies, other individuals, our own kids, anything we can do to inspire a, and, and co-create a kinder world on every level. If that happens, then we will bring some real value to this situation that we're living in. I remember, uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but I remember, uh, well, my, my daughter died when she was a baby, our oldest daughter, right before 9-11. She, she was born on March 8th, 2001, and she died of a heart defect on April 1st, 2001. And I remember saying immediately after her death, within a day or two, I'm going to make something good come of this. If I just sink into wallowing in misery, then she died for no good reason. And I couldn't stop her death and I couldn't change the outcome. But by golly, I can surely make something good come of it. And my husband and I uh, started a charity that we ran for 12 years to support kids living with heart defects. We sent, we, we gave scholarships to teenagers going to college with, scholar, uh, with heart defects. And we sent younger kids to a special camp each summer for kids with heart defects. So we did that for 12 years. 
And we met so many wonderful people through that foundation. And it was just a wonderful thing. And it felt so good to keep Sydney's memory alive in that way. I wrote, well, I kept a journal that I haven't yet turned into a book, but that's a goal that I have. Uh, so eventually that good will come of it. And just the way she changed my life and my husband's life, we made good things come of it. And I have the same mindset about this. We can make good things come of this pandemic. It doesn't diminish the challenge and the very real hardship that so many are facing and the loss of lives health, security, well-being, finances, jobs, companies. It doesn't diminish the very real challenge that we're in, but the deeper the challenge, the bigger the blessings that we can create out of it. That's kind of how I look at it. Thank you, Laura. Yes, my daughter Sydney was a precious little angel who only got to be with us for 24 days but I'm telling you, she would have turned 19 a couple of weeks ago on March 8th. And even to this day, she makes me who I am. And she influences the way that I live my life. The blessings that she brought to me still keep giving me gifts 19 years later. So we can absolutely make some good things come of this and we don't even know what good all the good things that we can create out of this situation because it's so rapidly evolving day by day we wake up to new circumstances hour by hour sometimes so i just encourage everyone to keep your eyes open to the possibilities of what good you can create out of this so I think that's pretty much the message that I wanted to share today. I wanted to thank you. Oh, Laura says, love you. She's an angel. My daughter just turned 13 yesterday. Oh, happy birthday to your daughter. Wow. Welcome to the teenage years. I say welcome to the teenage years because I particularly, I personally love teenagers. I have a 17-year-old, a 14-year-old, and a 12-year-old who will be a teenager in about five or six weeks. So don't listen to those people who tell you the teenage years are awful. They're different and they're an adventure, but teenagers are awesome. And I love teenagers. And so welcome to the teenage years and happy birthday to her. She's in for it's a strange time to turn 13, but she's moving into a really awesome phase of childhood. So happy birthday to her. All right. So I am going to wrap up. Thank you, Laura, for being here with me and Carrie, who was here a little bit earlier. And I hope that you will be free to join me again tomorrow where we will pick up and chat some more and we'll see where our world is tomorrow at the same time. Thank you for joining me live and thank you to those who will catch the replay. Thank you. Bye-bye.